Hi, my name is Alper and I'm a second year undergrad at Columbia University. In this video, I'm excited to present cloth funnels, canonicalized alignment for multipurpose garment manipulation. Real-world cloth manipulation has recently made a lot of progress, from folding to unfolding to arbitrary garment manipulation. Typically, each of these methods demand significant engineering and research efforts, but they only work on specific tasks and cloth instances. To better reuse these efforts, we ask the question, how can we design a multi-purpose garment manipulation pipeline? The answer lies in the right trade-off between specificity and generality, indicated by the horizontal axis. On the specific end, we have heuristics, which work really well under strong assumptions on cloth types and configurations, but most of these assumptions are unrealistic for garments found in natural environments. On the other end, we have goal condition manipulation, which is an extremely general formulation, but because these methods are so general, they have only been shown to work on simple cloth instances and constrained tasks. In a step towards the right direction, we have learning-based unfolding, which has been motivated as a task-agnostic first step for garment manipulation. But it turns out we can impose even more structure into a garment than naively increasing its coverage. Specifically, we can bring garments to a structured pose, termed canonicalization, and we can do so at a desired position and orientation, which we call alignment. Combined together, we call this task canonicalized alignment, and we hypothesize that this task significantly reduces the complexity of downstream tasks. Why? Because canonicalized alignment can act as a cloth state funnel, taking a diverse set of self-occluded configurations and turning it into a structured state. This not only reduces the variation that downstream tasks need to deal with, but it also increases visibility so that something like a keypoint detector can work with a high success rate. Finally, we can even satisfy task-specific downstream kinematic constraints by goal conditioning the cloth at different planar positions and rotations. Now given this task, a naive objective formulation to learn is the negative distance between the goal and the current cloth configuration. However, deformations of small parts, like the shirt's arms, contribute very little to this term, while rigid transforms contribute a lot. This means that this reward emphasizes alignment much more than canonicalization. Instead, we propose a factorized reward formulation, which weighs between canonicalization and alignment. Now suppose that we transform the goal to minimize the alignment distance and obtain this configuration that is shown in red. Since the distance between the red configuration and the current configuration disregards cloth's alignment, we use it as the canonicalization reward. Meanwhile, the distance between the red configuration and the green goal configuration this regards canonicalization, so we use this as the alignment reward. We provide more details in the paper, but the upshot of this is that our factorized reward allows us to separately supervise on the two objectives and flexibly tune between them at test time, giving us better performance all around. Now, how do we get this canonicalization goal in the first place? Turns out the Cloth 3D dataset already contains garments in the canonical pose. So we just load these meshes into the PyFlex simulation environment save out the current pose as the goal, we drop the cloth, and then we randomly transform it in order to create our tasks. Since we only need canonicalized cloth meshes to generate our training data, our method can work with many cloth categories. To get the cloth from this crumpled state to a canonicalized aligned state, both efficiently and precisely, we need to find the appropriate action primitives. Quasi-static actions, such as pick and place, are good at making small local adjustments but they are too inefficient when starting from a crumpled state. On the other hand, dynamic flings can unfold very efficiently, but they can't make fine-grained adjustments to get a cloth to a canonicalized state. Since these primitives address each other's weaknesses, we combine them both in a multi-primitive multi-arm setup for canonicalized alignment. From a top-down RGB image, our network first predicts the reward for each action using spatial action maps, then chooses the highest value action. This means that if the best pick and place has a higher value than the best fling, then we execute pick and place over fling and vice versa. In the example that is shown here, the cloth is almost at the goal, so a fine green pick and place is better than a fling, so the pick and place is executed. Recreating the setup and simulation, we train a model for each category, and we find that each model discovers interesting strategies for its own category. For example, while the shirt and the jumpsuit need pick and place to adjust the arms, skirts, dresses, and pants are mostly canonicalized after a few flings, so pick and place is used a lot less. 
quantitatively, we reach about 70% IOU for each category, which you have observed to qualitatively indicate a successful episode. Now let's see how canonicalized alignment can be useful for downstream tasks. We first train a key point detection model from simulated high coverage cloth instances. And then we use this key point model to parameterize a folding heuristic that first grabs the wrist key points and brings them to the waist key points, folding the arms, and then grabs the shoulder key points and brings them to the waist key points, folding the shirt in half. To see why canonicalization is essential for this task, we compare cloth funnels with Flingbot in terms of downstream folding success. Since Flingbot maximizes coverage and not alignment, we also align Flingbot's outputs for a more fair comparison. On the left comparison, we see that Flingbot cannot spread out the arms of the shirt, so the key point model fails to estimate the arm lengths, and the folding fails. Whereas on the right comparison, we see that Flingbot's result has a rotated cloth torso, which leads to suboptimal folding shape, whereas our method folds the shirt almost perfectly. These differences are reflected in the folding success rate, where our method is able to beat Flingbot by a large margin. Next, we directly deploy our shirt model in the real world without fine-tuning, and we compare our method against three baselines indicated by the first three columns. In the first column, we have Flingbot, which can effectively increase coverage but cannot explicitly align the cloth. In the second column, we have Aligned Fling, which can align and unfold the cloth well, but fails to canonicalize the arms. In the third column is Aligned Pick and Place, which cannot even unfold the cloth. In contrast, our method combines both fling and pick and place, as well as our novel reward formulation, to achieve efficient canonicalization, outperforming the baselines in terms of both IOU with the gold mask, as well as coverage. Next, we show some real-world applications of our task. As the first downstream application, we present shirt folding. As you can see, the robot first resets the cloth, and then it flings the cloth a few times to unfold it and align it. Next, it uses the pick and place primitive to adjust the arms and make minor adjustments to the alignment as well. Finally, the key points are detected and the folding heuristic is executed. To demonstrate our method's generalization within its own category, we present two other examples of shirts which undergo the exact same canonicalized alignment policy and folding heuristic. As before, the robot first flings and aligns the cloth, and then it uses pick and place to bring the arms to a T-pose, and finally, the folding heuristic is executed. Now we look at some real-world ironing, which motivates the alignment part of our method even more. Here, the task is to take in a crumpled cloth and sequentially perform canonicalized alignment with two different alignment goals, one on the right for ironing the left arm, and one on the left for ironing the right arm. The shirt is first canonicalized and aligned on the right side, and then a fixed ironing trajectory comes down, and then we do the same thing on the left side to iron the right arm. Here, we show ironing performance on two other shirts. Note that there's a bit of a centurial gap with the green shirt at the bottom here since the collar doesn't fold in like this in simulation. A useful research direction for the future could be looking into how to derive this supervision for canonicalized alignment in the real world. Thanks for listening. For more details and content, check out our website.